Hi all, let's have a look at another amazing game from the past. This was from the Adolf Anson against Daniel Horowitz match. So two of the greatest players at the time played this match. This is one of the more interesting games in the match. Anson playing white played d4. We have d5. Daniel Horowitz played actually a Tarash, uh, Tarash system. Uh, basically, knight c3, knight f6, knight f3, knight c6. We have symmetry to start off with, and again, symmetry here. So, both sides are totally symmetrical for the moment. But here, black doesn't play bishop b7, doesn't mirror, he plays actually c takes, and now bishop d6. And okay, after knight e7, maybe white should play queen e2 here. He played knight e2, this might be the first significant kind of error. From a technical perspective, because it allows black the forcing move d takes and the possibility of doubling the pawns. But you might think, oh, isn't this a swings and roundabouts situation? Uh, you know, doubling the pawns here. This is an interesting debating point. You could argue, doesn't white get this g file? And, you know, maybe in conjunction with d5, this could be later uh, very dangerous, these bishops. Is it worth actually playing bishop takes f3? Depends how well black uses his trumps uh, after this. In fact, black did take and castles, yep, not minding the g file. We have h4. And now knight h5. It, the thing is about these double pawns is the blockade square on f4. Black, in my view, really expertly kind of uh, makes use of this now, creating a nice blockade on the f4 square. King of one f5, daring to play f5 to shut down this diagonal as well now at the cost of potential backward pawn. But how easy is it really to exploit this pawn? Not very at all. Okay, queen e3, but now just this protects e6 rather elegantly. And also puts pressure on white's position. All sorts of places. Note also the rooks kind of tied down to h4. The queen's staring at that isolated pawn as well. So Black's got a nice position here, technically. Uh, so the argument, it seems to be being won for actually taking on f3. Uh, just to give you a technical evaluation of this position, yeah, it's in black's favour by about half a pawn. Uh, so the bishop drops back, queen e7. White plays c5, he's trying to open up clearly this bishop on this diagonal. But with these blockading knights, they're quite actually so they're securing down black's king safety uh, we have b takes anyway opening up that seemingly dangerous bishop uh, but also you'll notice white's kind of weakened himself a bit on this d file in theory there's less pawn shields around so that d file could be handy for black knight d4 an aggressive move it seems and it seems you know with these queens staring against each other there's, there's going to be an issue with a pin on f5, you know, this this pinned pawn here with this loose queen. Black plays a very cunning move here, king h8. And here, perhaps best is bishop takes f5, but black would get a good game. He didn't play this. Black can get a good game with e5. For example, like this, where white's position is actually pretty precarious. Um, there's there's tactical points here after queen e8 holding h5 and this queen b5 check uh, to win the bishop if the knight moves there's some dangerous tactical points basically with the king on f1 in this position and these points are kind of echoed in the main variation of the game but just to show you this position is favoring black in any case but in the game it's much much worse after knight takes f5 is played not bishop takes f5 Black does actually tap into uh, White's issues here rather elegantly with this mini combination. Black to play. Okay, what would you play with Black in this position if I give you five seconds starting from now? It looks also there's some coordination, doesn't there? But it's. The knight on h5 is actually defending g7. This is a little bit remarkable. Uh, in fact, it's the reason I want to show you this game. This this little tactical idea trap 
black setting, especially for Knight takes f5, I find remarkable for the time of 1848 that Daniel Horwitz can play so well positionally with the blockade and tactically as well in setting this trap. So black to play. He plays actually rook takes f5. After bishop takes f5, there's a beautiful clinical move which I think is an out of era move basically. Well, it's really strong tactically. It's it's the whole basis of this trap here. Black to play, it's one move which ticks all the boxes to actually win material. If I give you five seconds, starting from now. Okay. I'll give you a clue though, there's a loose piece on b2 and a loose piece on f5. How does black try and exploit these loose pieces in this position? Of course the, the pawn's pinned, so you, you might want to use an unpinning tactic as well. The move which ticks all these boxes, unpinning the pawn, and now not only the bishop's threatened but also this queen is threatening the check. And also you'll note with queen here instead of here for example d3 is covered there's no retreat to stop this use of the b5 square this is why i think this move is really clinical and superb it's the end it's the top engine move queen d7 in this position guarantees black a winning advantage anything else you know bishop d3 no big deal anything else is no big deal here this one rook b1 and there's actually in this position uh, bishop e4 for example equal yeah but with queen d7 this is a big advantage to black whatever happens now this this seals the game seals the fate of the game this move white desperately took on e6 he's material down yep simplification uh, no hope of an attack. The knights are both defending g7. Again, that torturous f4 square is used. The rook's tied down to defending the bishop here. The knight's covering the back row as well. So this is a threat if the rook uh, moves away from the bishop. h5. It's a very desperate situation. Nice pin, threatening bishop d2. Desperate move. It's lost anyway. Now knight d3 forcibly wins more material after rook takes c1 this is a winning pass pawn whatever happens now if white took just take here and queen the pawn etc so white resigns here but yeah it's it's a game uh, in like the notable games of the era according to chess games common it has a very very nice uh you know that argument about doubling the pawns or not is won by black very convincingly in this game and the tactical trap is wonderful, I believe, with queen d7 tapping into the loose pieces. Really expert positional play. Hope you enjoyed this one. So you can see that Daniel Harwitz is a bit of a star in his era. You know, obscured by other stars, but nevertheless a star. He did lose this match against Adolf Anderson. But at this point, yeah, he's a formidable opponent in 1848. Daniel Harwitz to Adolf Anderson. He only lost by a point this match. Okay, comments, questions, likes, appreciated. Thanks very much.